Hello. So, in this video, we're going to be tackling sort of a natural follow-up to the chain rule, which is sort of the classic questions of when do you use it and how do you sort of use it without losing your spot. So, figuring out how to recognize a composition of functions, the sort of unsatisfying but truthful answer to that is that it comes with experience. That's something that you really just need to do a lot of in order to really see how to pick functions apart. Um, we'll have a bunch of example videos for exactly this reason, but this is something that you really want to practice a lot of. The second part, what order to apply the chain rule when you have compositions that go, you know, several layers deep. This is the thing that we're going to cover sort of primarily in this video. So the general rule of thumb, work from the outside in. So let's say that you have something like f of g of h of x, right? You have these many deep things. So when you're wanting to tackle this, you want to tackle it again from the outside in. So, right, we have this derivative of all of that mess. And the chain rule says, okay, if you're going to take a derivative of a bunch of stuff, then it starts with the outermost function, in this case, f, you would take the derivative of that, leave everything else the same, right? So it's f prime of g of h of x, and then take the derivative of all of that inside stuff. So you can think of this as that derivative of f of stuff is f prime of stuff times the derivative of that stuff, okay? And importantly here, you don't really want to try to bite off too much all at once. Like the sort of classic way this goes astray is people try to do, right, they, they start with this f prime of stuff. And then when they, instead of writing something like this, they try to then do this at the same time, right? They then try to take this derivative and that might pop out another derivative and they try to do that as well. And they sort of try to do everything all at once. And inevitably something goes wrong along the way, but it's almost impossible to see because you did everything at once. So instead, sort of do this piece, but you can literally write this kind of thing, right? Just times derivative of whatever the inside was, and then as your next line, do the same thing again, right? The outer function here is g, so think of it as g of stuff. You're taking derivative of that, so it's g prime of that stuff, h of x, times the derivative of that stuff, h of x, right? So you can go ahead and use this derivative notation, this d over dx notation, to track your work along the way and do it in several steps where you'll be much less likely to make a mistake. So last but not least, right, now all we have is derivative of h of x left to do, and that's just h prime of x. So we started with the outermost function, right, f. So we did f prime of stuff times derivative of that stuff. Then we did the derivative of that stuff, which was g prime of stuff times derivative of that stuff again, right? And then we did derivative of that piece. So we did it sort of one layer at a time to get there, okay? And doing it this way, again, makes it much less likely that you'll make an error. All right, so what do we do? So applying the chain rule, it's something that we'll be doing a whole lot moving forward. It's gonna come up all over the place. And keeping track of which step you're on and which things still need to be differentiated, you still need to take the derivative of, that's a really easy thing to lose track of and mess up along the way. So the general strategy is to go ahead and apply the chain rule from the outside in, but don't be afraid to use that d over dx notation so that you don't try to do everything all at once, right? You, you do sort of one chunk at a time and that way you'll be able to keep track of what's going on. If you make a mistake, it'll be easier to figure out where that mistake happened and you'll be much less likely to make a mistake in the first place. Okay, so that's that.